Hi, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And in this uh, video, we're continuing in our seven habits of highly effective milking routines. This week, we're focusing on step five, proper attachment of the milking units, and step six, removing the units when milking is completed. So in this step, we're talking about timely application of the milking unit itself. And the objective of um, application of the unit or attachment of the milking unit is to coordinate the attachment of the milking unit with milk letdown. If you're unsure about how to do this, make sure to go back and review the previous steps, especially step three and four in this series because we need to make sure we've got appropriate stimulation and appropriate disinfection before we get to this point. Now when we think about timely application of the milking unit, what we're discussing is technically called the prep lag time. And that time is the time between stimulation of the cow and attachment of the milking unit. Now historically, we thought that we had about one minute, 60 seconds between the beginning of stimulation and the time uh, that we need to get that milking unit attached. But as we learned more about uh, stimulatory needs and the milk letdown process itself, what we've learned is that the time between stimulation and unit attachment should not be less than about 60 seconds and can go up to about two or even two and a half minutes. So in contrast to our previous beliefs where we absolutely had to get that unit attached at about a minute, what we've learned now is it's much more detrimental to attach a milking unit too soon as compared to wait a little longer. And the reason for that is, is that when a cow comes into that milking parlor, from the time of stimulation, we have to allow enough time for the oxytocin to travel from the pituitary gland to its receptors in the mammary gland. And that takes about a minute. This again is good news because it gives us a little more flexibility in how we can design our work routines in the milking parlor. I want to just expand a little bit on the importance of understanding the milk letdown process. The amount of time that it takes from teat stimulation until the onset of milk letdown is approximately 60 to maybe 60 seconds to up to two, two and a half minutes. However, that time isn't the same for every single cow that we're attaching milking units to. The amount of time it takes for milk letdown is dependent on how full the udder is. So cows in earlier lactation Cows that are producing more milk and cows that have longer milking intervals have shorter, smaller, or smaller stimulatory needs. They require less stimulation to have milk let down. So um, while in the ideal world we would customize our milking process for each cow's needs, in reality we don't do that. What we actually do is produce a consistent milking routine that does the best job for the majority of the cows. So when we look at designing our milking routines, if you got a herd that has lower stimulatory needs, higher producing herd, longer milking intervals, for example, you could err a little bit toward that 60 seconds. Whereas if you've got a herd that's maybe um, later in, in uh, lactation or a herd that uh, is milked more frequently, you could err a little bit toward the longer part of that interval. So again, what we've learned about milk letdown allows us to create a milking routine that works for our individual farms. So I want to spend just a minute talking about the actual mechanical steps of attaching that milking unit. It's very important that we do this consistently and that as we attach each of those individual teacups, we take care to minimize air admission. We normally do that by keeping the short milk tubes bent back over the ferrules of the cluster and then we raise the individual teat cups toward each teat and rapidly attach it, minimizing the amount of air that gets sucked into that unit during the process. Now there's different ways that we attach um, milking units depending on the configuration of the milking parlor. 
And we have to take that into account when we uh, work to ensure that the alignment of the milking unit with the udder is properly done. In a herringbone milking parlor, the claw outlet should be aligned and pointed at the head of the cow. In a parallel milking parlor, the claw outlet comes out between the legs and in most instances in parallel parlors, we need to have some sort of device on that long milk hose that allows us to properly align that unit so it hangs square on the udder and uh, so we have complete milk out. And if you happen to be milking in a stall barn, that long milk hose should hang behind the shoulder of the cow. So one of the ways we can tell if we've done a nice job of attaching milking units and of course a nice job of having a good functional milking parlor is to um, be aware of the amount of liner slips that occur during the milking process. We've gone out to about, uh, I think it was 70 some um, milking facilities and actually counted the number of slips. And in our experience and the research we've done, there should be less than five to 10 liner slips per 100 cows that are milked. Another thing we've looked at is the amount of time that the milking unit is reattached. And our reattached means the milking unit has come off because you've got an automatic takeoff unit or you feel the milking is done and then for some reason the milking technician decides to put the milking unit back on. In um, the work that we've done, we've arrived at an, uh, um, a unit reattachment rate which should be less than 5%. So less than five out of 100 milking units should require a reattachment um, after the milking has been done. So when we've decided what all the components of the pre-milking prep and the attachment are, then we have to come up with our work routine amongst the people in the parlor. And there's a variety of work routines that are acceptable and can achieve very good milking performance. And all of those work routines have several things in common. The principles that we want to achieve with our work routine in the parlor is we need to have that routine designed to allow us to achieve 10 to 20 seconds of stimulation um, to allow milk let down. That's normally the force achieved through the force stripping process. We want to have a 20 to 30 second contact time of the pre-dip on the teat skin before it's dried off. We want to have a 60 to 120 second prep lag time, time between stimulation and unit attachment. And we need to have a routine that allows time for all of these things to be accomplished and let the, the workers uh, walk between the cows and effectively dry the teats. In most parlors, parallel parlors or herringbone parlors, uh, these principles are best achieved by a territorial milking routine where parts of the parlor are the responsibility of an individual milker to perform all the steps. Now a rotary parlor is obviously different, but uh, we recommend the use of territorial routines such as are demonstrated here. So when we're evaluating a parlor work routine and the components of that, the things we're looking for are, is force stripping effective for stimulation and detection of mild cases of clinical mastitis? Is the pre-dip in contact with the teat skin for a long enough time, that 20 to 30 second minimum time, to have an effective kill rate? Are the teats being properly dried so if we took a gauze swab across that teat end, it'd come back as that uh, teat cleanliness score one? And is the milking unit being attached within the proper time period so that we can have that milk letdown coordinated with that unit attachment. In most instances, in most parlors, we're gonna be able to achieve that in working in groups somewhere between three to six cows per milker um, uh, in a territorial uh, type of routine. So as we complete that milking process, 
we move into the sixth habit of a highly successful milking routine, and that's the process of removing the units at the appropriate time and in the proper manner. So the fundamental question that, uh, that comes up when we talk about removing milking units is what does it mean for milking to be complete? How do we know when the cows are properly milked out? And our knowledge of um, complete milking has evolved rapidly in the past five to 10 years. One thing we have to understand is the udder is never completely empty of milk. After we, uh, milk, uh, after we complete the milking, milk continues to be produced. So there's no reason to try to remove all the milk from the udder. It's never going to be empty of milk. Second uh, important principle to understand is that the four quarters in that udder do not finish at the same time. Different quarters have different amounts of milk and different milk out rates, and different quarters finish at different times. For example, the front quarters typically are done before the rear quarters. So when we think about removing the milking unit, we need to balance the need to collect the milk with the potential problem of having a prolonged milking period in a quarter during a period of low flow. In general, we'd consider a fully milked out cow to have a minimum of about 100 to 200 milliliters or one to two cups of milk left per quarter. And at that point, we're ready to take those teat cups off. The current recommendations for most farms are to remove the milking unit when flow drops below about one to two pounds of milk per minute. That's about 500 milliliters or a half to one kilogram of milk per minute. That's a very safe recommendation for the time when milk when the milking unit can be removed. And we never recommend that you hand strip or, or machine strip um, those udders trying to get every last drop of milk out of them before you remove that milking unit. The, the risk of that is much greater than any potential benefit that you'd have by um, extracting extra milk. So milking is, is completed when the available milk, based on the threshold that we've defined for an individual farm, is fully harvested. And so what we want to emphasize is that we want to consistently remove that milking unit when we reach that threshold. And the best way to do that is to have the use of an automatic takeoff unit, or, or as it's said in other regions, an automatic cluster remover do the actual removal process itself. Now automatic takeoff units are found in the vast majority of milking parlors and in at least half of tie stall operations. We recommend their use for two reasons. They increase the throughput in a milking parlor and they increase the consistency of that takeoff process. And then finally, they're also an advantage to the use of automatic takeoffs because they free up the milking technician's labor to allow them to do a better job of focusing on teat dipping and pre-milking cow preparation. So we highly encourage the use of these automatic takeoff units. Now if you've got automatic detachers, one thing we want to make sure that we do is use them properly. And the proper use of an automatic detacher means that we use that automatic detacher at least 95% of the time. When, uh, when manual detachment is used for one reason or the other, we want to make sure that it's used only on cows that will benefit from that, and that should be rare. Research we've done on the, out in the field on commercial dairy farms show that farms that use manual detaching on more than 10% of the milkings have a higher proportion of teats that have hyperkeratotic lesions. So our threshold should be 90 to 95 percent of the detaching should be done using that automatic detacher unit. So habit five of our seven habits of highly effective milking routines is focused on proper attachment. We want to make sure we don't attach too soon. 
we want to make sure that prep lag time is about one to two and a half minutes after stimulation. And habit six means that when milking is over, we want to take that milking unit off at the appropriate time, meaning we don't want to over milk and we want to look at taking that unit off sometime when we're around one to two pounds per minute flow or half to one kilo per minute. In our final habit of the highly effective milking routines, we're going to focus on managing those cows after milking is completed. Thank <laughs> you.